Welcome back to S. Wiggins TV. As always, I'm your host, Worldwide Wiggins. And I'm back with another dope Where Are They Now episode. Real fast, remember, if you don't see content drop on this channel, remember, I got a second channel. I just dropped some rare dope content on there just now. I'm going to put it in the first comment. So y'all scroll down to the first comment on this page. Y'all go check it out. Now, obviously, y'all want to know what happened to this gangsta mug right here. But for the people who's not familiar, you know, with the show or don't watch TV or what even happened, we're going to do a quick recap of what happened in the episode on Judge Joe Brown. And then I'm going to show y'all what happened to him. I promise it'll be fast. So I ain't going to keep y'all waiting. So let's take a quick look and a breakdown of what happened. I didn't go to Vegas to party. Well, what'd you go there for, gamble? That's none of your business. Oh, well, yes, it is. Uh, that'll be a $50, uh, $100 assessment for impertinence. Now, you want to get cute with me? You want to tell me the truth? <laughs> you, you, being, you being real cute. <laughs> That's Be another hundred dollar assessment. Man, come on, man. I suggest you See, stop before I bust this, you man. badly, you son. Don't nothing. disappoint your mother. <laughs> talking to. Oh, you want to be like that? Bring the witness in. Yeah, bring a witness. Are you acquainted with the two individuals to your left? Yes, sir. Are you acquainted with the young man on the far left? Yes, sir. Where do you know him from? Uh, Linwood. All right, now, are you familiar with the subject matter of this proceeding? Yes, sir. Now, do you have anything to add to this? I was in the car with him. Who's him? Uh, Brandon. When, when, we left the, <laughs> when we left the motorcycle club. Where were you guys? Um, I believe it's like Redondo. Okay. What's the name of the club? Uh, the Red Breed. The motorcycle club. Yes, sir. Go ahead. When we left the motorcycle club, I got in the car with Antonio. All right. I left. We got in the car. We left. I asked him if he could take me home. I stopped, and then I, uh, I asked Brandon if he can take me home. So Brandon was gonna take me to my house. I got out the car with Antonio. When I get up in the car with Brandon, he driving real fast, speeding on the wrong side of the street. When we get on Imperial, I'm telling him like slow down because there ain't no airbags in the back seat. The passenger, the passenger that was in the car with us, uh, I don't believe he had on no seatbelt. So I was in the back seat and uh, he he uh, he didn't want to stop. He didn't want to stop uh, speeding. So when we get to Imperial and Broadway, um, Antonio he got he turned he made a right on um, onto Broadway and then made a got in the turning lane to make that left and go back up Imperial. But Brandon, it was a red light. It was a red light on Broadway and Imperial. So Brandon, he swung lanes and got in a turning lane and ran a red light. And that's when he struck his car, struck Antonio's car. The car, the car stopped in the middle of uh, Imperial and Broadway. They, we, got, we got out the car, looked at the car. The car was totaled, the rental was totaled. Um, Brandon told the passenger to uh, look in the car for the, um, look in the car for the liquor that was in the car or whatever. The, uh, he um, called his mom, he told his cousin, that he was gonna call his mom and tell his mom that his that the rental got stolen. But then we was thinking like, why are you gonna tell your mama that your rental got stolen and you was, your fingerprints was the last ones on the car? So his one of his friends, his one of his friends pulled up, he jumped in the car with his friend, told his mama the little the little situation, and I guess that's how they made the uh, police report about the stolen car, but the whole time the car wasn't stolen. I have no clue. What, Cause what, you're lying. I'm not lying about anything. Son, I have all you're my lying. Evidence. I have all my You're evidence. lying. You don't want to listen to it. You are lying. You think the dope crowd is crazy? You're not, not, you're not gonna sit here put this and not be allow quiet. me to say my case. You're not gonna do that. Now you keep it up. Let me get my point You keep it up. You don't have a point because the deeper you get into it, the more you get deep into a perjury charge. You won't be walking too far without a warrant for your arrest. There's also an ongoing investigation for a felony hit and run, and we've got enough to bust you right here. That's not right, though. Just be fair. That's all I'm it's asking. not your line. That's all Be I'm a asking. man. I am a man. Oh, you, oh, you're not. You got your hands in your pockets. Yeah, well, my body language. Out, you know what I'm that means? The you know what that means? I know what my body me. language is saying. I will enlighten you and banish some of your ignorance. Now, your of mother deals with talking. probationers, parolees, yeah, she and man. she's listening to you, and Fine. she's not even looking at you because she, she's she listening no to your tone. She can sit down. And by the way. Been having problems before. Your mother is disappointed with you. You're 24. How old are you? 24 years old. You ought to be doing something. Sitting up in here trifling and carrying on like you lost your trifling. mind instead of being well, a man. Watch your mouth, man. How is he? My he mouth. Call me out of my name, but I can't speak to him. How I want. Because I'll jack that? you up. What's happening? One way or the other. What, what look, happened? Look, look, look. Don't even go there. Look, look, you first. Your mother's mission is a sworn official. I'm thinking of sending this case to the DA. I didn't do with a letter. 
I'm leaving. No, you ain't. Oh, whoa, another hundred. I tell you what, I'm sending it. Send it. You got all my information, and you, you right here. Excuse me. Under arrest, terroristic yeah. threats, and an official position. Well, I, I just Okay, so basically they all went to a club in Redondo. They know each other. G Ninja, you feel me? Talking high power. Got in an accident with the other dude over there, allegedly. You know, they got to an accident over here in the Broadway Gangsters Hood, 11 Dose, and they took him to court. And they, they, he supposed to be cool. They supposed to be homies, too. And uh, homie brought a witness saying homie was snitching his ass off, man. But the case, it was the dude reaction that made the case memorable. You know, he was loped out. He cussed the judge out. He bust a nutty on the dudes. They took him to court, straight walked off. He didn't give up. Now, let me give you an introduction to this dude right here. His name is Baby Lodog. He irreparable from Pomino Gangsta Crip, Linwood. They out there in Linwood, California. And if you didn't notice, that's what he said. They met each other in Linwood, right? And the Pominos don't play. It's a war zone over there. They got nothing but paw rules and Crips and massacre hoods. But that's another story. Y'all already know what happened to Lodo. You ready? Let's go. So, I'm cool with his older homie. And, and I don't know if you want me to put his name out there, but shouts out to A. Dizzle. But here's what happened. A while back, baby Lodog was arrested. And he got sentenced to 14 years for a Kiznizat and Rizabri charge. But I know he ain't do it, you know. And the system is wicked out there. They just want to get a conviction, you know, to meet the quota. But it just so happened that he was released a couple weeks ago and he's getting his life together. But we got something coming up together. So y'all just keep it locked. Uh, yeah, he been down for 14 years. And this video was when he was younger. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have flicks and all that. You know, I, ain't wanna, I, you know, I couldn't really put it up without his permission, but yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, 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 just be on the lookout. And by the way, let me, let me, let me break something down for you. When you go on some of these shows, I'm not saying this, this specific case, but most of the cases is already predetermined. They fly you in, they pay for your hotel, they pay for your food, and they pay you a, a small appearance fee just so you could come up there and get a judgment, and it looked like a real case and go home. You know, allegedly. And they might pay for your court costs, but for the most part, it's all caca. So in my estimation, when he cussed the judge out and all that, and they said arrest him, all I'm saying is don't be surprised if, you know, they put him in the back room and say, hey, bro, chill out, my ninja. But I'm not saying that's what happened. You know, quote me right if you go quote me. <laughs> but I know how it go. You feel me? I already know the dude script. Dude, a lot of these mother are fake judges. My ninja, Steve Harvey, got his own court show. My ninja, Jerry Springer, had his own court show. Man, f that. I ain't, no, I ain't no police and I ain't no rat, none of that, you feel me? None of that type sh But on some streets, you know, some entertainment, sh I'm gonna start bringing people on my show, like, and start judging some matters. Like, you feel me? Like, Hey, homie, if that baby ain't yours, you're not the father, I'm going to order her to pay you back in child support. I'm Judge Wiggins. That. Yeah. <laughs> hey, jump a comment, man. If I get 10 likes, I'm, I'm, that's my new show. I'm taking over the game. I'm taking over the court game. <laughs> but yeah, man, if you like this kind of content, I'm serious, too. If you like this type of content, man, and you want me to do some more of these, bro, you know, uh, let me know, man. Let me know something, man. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, man. And keep it locked. The interview coming soon. I'm out of here. Whoop.